Just wanted to record a quick video here on the concept of fabric capacities and reservations. I've seen a lot of content on the fabric capacities themselves, not as much on the reservations and, and how that actually works. Um, so really the, the key thing to understand um, is that the reservation is a, is a separate thing that you're doing in the portal uh, outside of the capacities themselves. So if we look at Microsoft Fabric capacities in Azure, uh, here's an example of one of those capacities. Um, really all I'm doing in the capacity creation is determining the region that that capacity is based in. So in this case, Canada Central and the SKU or size, that's the F2 up to the F2048. Um, very easy to change the size here. Basically just two clicks, resize. Um, so that, that this is all happening totally independently from the concept of the reservation itself. So the price that you see on the capacity is always gonna be the pay-as-you-go price. Um, and really the only other thing that I can do with the capacity in the Azure portal is set my list of capacity admins. Um, that's pretty much it. So if we hop back out, um, assuming I've created my fabric capacity where I've resized or, or really whatever else I need to do, uh, the reservation is something that I would create separately. So we can see here, I have a couple reservations already purchased. Uh, but the process to actually buy one of these, I can take you through what that looks like. Um, reservations apply to a bunch of different products uh, in Azure. They're sort of an Azure thing um, that Fabric is now leveraging. So if I, I click on a Fabric reservation here, a um, couple things it's going to ask me. One is a scope, which is when this reservation attempts to match up to a capacity, um, how restrictive is it? So I'm purchasing this reservation for um, potentially a specific resource group or subscription. If I was purchasing this capacity in an organization that had a bunch of fabric capacities, um, where am I allowing this reservation to be leveraged? If it's set to shared, um, and this will tell you, um, basically, yeah, there's a bunch of billing stuff, but uh, it's most of the time, the majority of the tenant, um, to my knowledge, at least. Um, so really all you're picking in terms of the reservation itself then is what billing subscription, where does that bill go to? Um, and then am I paying upfront for the capacity or am I paying monthly? Um, they're both on a one year term. We'll talk about that one-year reservation. This is where it shows up. Um, and you'll see here when I select um, either of these, they're both going to say that that 40% estimated savings. Um, this is slightly region dependent, but uh, that is if you were looking at the fabric pricing page and they talk about that discount, this is where you actually end up seeing that. Um, I, I don't actually know of a good reason to pay for this upfront because I don't think there's any kind of discount for doing that. So when I'm doing it for our demo environment, I'm looking at the monthly cost here. Um, and the monthly price it's showing you is actually for like a single capacity unit, like quantity of one. Um, so we'll see this. If I was going to create a reservation for that capacity we looked at previously, I'd want to make sure that I'm creating the reservation in the right region. So that would be Canada Central. Um, in which case this price is probably slightly different. Um, but I basically add that to my cart. And if I take a look at what shows up, there's a reservation name. You can see the product that I'm reserving is fabric capacity in Canada Central for a year. Uh, do I want this to renew after that year is up? This is my scope. So look for all the fabric capacities in that tenant and attempt to leverage this reservation against those capacities. Billing every month, and then this is my unit price. So if I've got an F2, I would typically be putting a quantity of two. Um, if I've got an F4, I'd put a quantity of four. If I've got an F8, I'd put eight, et cetera. Uh, theoretically, those don't necessarily have to match. So let's say I purchase a reservation uh, for an F8, and maybe I run my F8 capacity 
24 seven, which would be the point of a reservation. Um, maybe there are situations where I need to scale that capacity from an F8 to an F16. Uh, that I could do on the capacity itself. And I would essentially be billed my regular monthly fee for the F8 reservation. And then for the amount of time I was scaled to an F16, I would pay an additional pay as you go price for the unreserved capacity units. So I would see an extra bill in my uh, subscription for the additional eight CUs that I was using for that time. Uh, that would also apply if let's say I had a, a development environment with uh, a fabric capacity that is paused most of the time that I resume temporarily, um, not on reservation, uh, then I do build for that separately as well. So really just understanding the concept that a reservation is something separate. You purchase it in Azure. Um, once that reservation is, is created, um, you'll get some utilization metrics and you'd want to verify these after the creation of a capacity to make sure that um, the combination of scope and region are essentially matching to that capacity. For fabric, generally, you're going to see these at 100% if it's working. Um, it generally would not make sense to pause a capacity attached or that is leveraging a reservation um, because you're paying for that reservation either way. So you can see in this case, we have um, in this demo environment, two separate F2 capacities. One of them's in West US2, one of them's in Canada Central. So I've got two separate reservations um, in each of those regions, and I've got my utilization at 100% um, across the last day and the, the last seven days. If I open one of these up, um, there is a graph at the bottom that will show day by day what, what percentage of this reservation are you using. Um, in the context of other Azure resources, this is more something that, that might vary over time. In the context of Fabric, uh, we would generally expect this to always be uh, uh, pegged at 100% other than you know, some specific scenarios of, of needing to pause um, for one reason or the other. Uh, so hope that helps. I think that's it for this one.